Well, hello everybody and welcome again to another OpenShift Commons briefing. This time I'm really thrilled to have with us um, the gang, the entire crew from Click to Cloud. Um, Kapil is going to be dri driving the conversation. But we're going to be talking about something that this um, Linux person doesn't always talk about all the time. We're talk going to talk about Microsoft Visual Studio and deploying and building dot app dot .NET applications um, to run on Red Hat OpenShift um, in the new world of Docker and containers. And this is the team that's making it all possible. So um, I'm going to give them, they've got a lot to talk about. So I'm going to give them, hand it over right right away to Capel. And Capel, if you can introduce yourself and tell us a little bit about Click to Cloud and then run through your demo. Then um, afterwards, after he's finished, uh, you can ask questions in the chat during the, the, comp, the presentation, but we'll answer any of your questions afterwards and open it up for conversation. So there you go, Capel. Get started. Yeah, thanks. Thanks, Diane. And hello, hello everyone. Uh, my name is Kapil Thakkar, and I am a senior system engineer here at Click to Cloud. And we are focusing on OpenShift 3 and containerized area. And I am here with my teammates, um, Pratika Madan, uh, who, will, who will be contributing via chat and help answering you uh, so questions. So um, Click to Cloud uh, is uh, totally uh, focusing on, on the OpenShift and, and the Docker, Docker uh, technologies. And it's an um, ISV partner of Red Hat and the gold partner of Microsoft. So topic for the day. So today we are going to talk about the integration of .NET applications with OpenShift 3 and we will see how we can use the Click to Cloud OpenShift tool for Visual Studio. So Click to Cloud OpenShift tool is our DevOps solution which allows developers to build, manage and deploy their containerized .NET applications and actually a lot more other applications straight from Visual Studio ID to Red Hat OpenShift 3 Cloud. So uh, I want to start here with a quick statement uh, problem of Visual Studio developers. So the first problem we see here is currently there is no DevOps solution available for Visual Studio developers using which they can build, manage and deploy their application right from the Visual Studio ID to OpenShift Cloud. And other problems uh, we see here that is uh, there's no source to our images and .NET applications and templates directly available in OpenShift 3 Cloud. Suppose uh, if developer wants to host their .NET based application on OpenShift 3 platform, they have to design a Docker, ba Docker file based on their application need and deploy their application using OpenShift 3 command line tool. So uh, to fix our first problem, we worked with Visual Studio developers and came across with Visual Studio extension for Red Hat OpenShift 3 Cloud. And it helps Visual Studio developers to create application right from ID and deploy it on uh, to the OpenShift 3 Cloud. Um, along with this, to enable .NET support on OpenShift 3, uh, we have developed .NET source to our images and templates that minimize .NET developer override to create Docker file and create application from the command prompt. So you can directly download the .NET source to our images and templates from the Docker Hub and the GitHub URL. And uh, here we can see the core architecture of our solutions. So um, here we can see the Visual Studio user creates a new application uh, using the OC3 Visual Studio tool by providing source code URL and the GitHub and from the GitHub and select the templates from the options. So the Visual Studio OpenShift, right? yeah. So the Visual Studio OpenShift tool will request OpenShift to create new application based on user input. And OpenShift merge the source code with the builder image provided in the template and creates new image using the OpenShift source to our engine. And it will create the ASP core 1.0 application on the OpenShift 3 cloud. And let's getting started with the prerequisites. To run our application, you require the Visual Studio 2015 installed on your Windows machine. So currently, um, the current version uh, is compatible with any additions of the Visual Studio 2015. And next you need the Git version controller and the OpenShift 3 uh, binaries for Windows, which is OC binaries. And also require the .NET uh, images and templates if you wish to enable the, the .NET capabilities on OpenShift 3 Cloud. So you can uh, get the detailed information on .NET source to our images and templates uh, for OpenShift 3 environment right from the GitHub URL. Now uh, we can see to get Visual Studio extension for OpenShift, you can directly go to the Microsoft Visual Studio Gallery and you can search for the keywords Click to Cloud or OpenShift. 
from there you can uh, select the appropriate plugin version of OpenShift Enterprise or the origin one. Um, so you need you can download the extension from there and once the installation is complete you need to activate the trial period by completing the registration process and verifying your email address. So we'll show you the Visual Studio Gallery first where the extension is available. And here we see, and here we see the extension is on Microsoft Visual Studio Gallery, and you can directly download it from here. And also, you can get the user guide, which shows the registration process and the uh, the right links of the prerequisite which is required to run the OpenShift extension. Okay, so once we are done with the prerequisite installation, uh, we are ready to create our first application on OpenShift Cloud. So I'm on my Visual Studio, and so I already downloaded the click to cloud extension on my machine and you can see the click to cloud menu on top of the menu bar. From here, we can create a new application on OpenShift server. Also, we'll talk about the modifying the existing application and also we can see the OpenShift Explorer and its features. So OpenShift Explorer is a gateway which enhances your capabilities to work on OpenShift cloud. So let's create our new application first. So here we need to provide the Server URL, um, the OpenShift server URL, and your username and your password. Then click on next. So once you log into the OpenShift server, it will ask you to create your first project if you do not have. So I'm going to create my first project. My first ASP app. And click on finish. So once you have created your first project, you can see the list of projects available from the drop down. And here we can see the list of templates available on the OpenShift 3 server. So we can create application using the existing template available on the OpenShift server, or we can use the custom template available on my local machine. So I'm going to use the OpenShift server templates. Um, so as we can see, the ASP.NET template and the ASP core template I already deployed on my OpenShift server. So now currently um, the application which I'm going to create uh, that the sample application it requires the MongoDB services and ASP.NET ASP core front end. So I'm going to select the ASP core MongoDB template here. By selecting this template I can also see the resources which are going to be created along with this application. So like here we can see the image streams and service routes. Click on next. Uh, from template parameter screen, we can provide the template parameters like the MongoDB username, the database, the password. So I'm just going to provide the database password. This three username. Okay, for user. Also, I'm going to provide my um, GitHub source code URL here uh, to deploy my source code to this application. And click on next. Uh, from resource labels, you can provide the resource labels. So I will go the default values here. Okay. Uh, once you click on finish, it will create. Uh, it will start creating your application on OpenShift 3 server, and it will display the application summaries, which highlight the resources which is uh, going to be created and the parameter values here. So you can also um, get the webhook URL directly from here, which helps developers to automatically trigger the build uh, right from the GitHub repository to your OpenShift application. Click on OK. And after that, it will ask you to clone your application um, to your local server. So I'm going to provide the clone destination path here. ASP app. Okay, and click on finish. So it will start loaning your application from the GitHub repository. And once the cloning is complete, it will launch the source code. Yeah. 
Once the cloning is complete, it will launch the source code to the Solution Explorer. Okay, so here we can see the source code which I'm going to use um, in, in the ASP.NET Core application. And also you can see the build logs has started. You can directly see the build logs and it's downloading the nugget packages for the application. So let's see the view page here. Yeah. So here you can see the source code and the view page which is going to be created. I am using um, the restaurant app application here which uh, which gives some tables of restaurant app ID in MongoDB and here we can see the title and heading page. So this application will take some time um, to build and to complete the build. So till then we will see the existing application which I have created earlier uh, using the same source code. Yeah. Here's the sample is with .NET Core with MongoDB. So the same application I have created earlier with the same source code and MongoDB services. So let's see how it looks like. So here you can see the ASP.NET Core and MongoDB application running on my OpenShift 3 server. And this is the database connected. Express provide some data here. Okay, submit. And here we can see I'm able to uh, push the data uh, from ASP.NET application to my MongoDB. So the connectivity between the ASP container, ASP.NET Core container, and MongoDB container is working fine here. So once our build is complete, the application looks like the same here. We'll come back again once uh, once that will complete. So uh, till then we will see uh, we will modify an existing application and we'll see how it looks like. So to modify an existing application, you can directly go to the to route menu. And here we can get the open existing application option here. Okay. So from here, you can log in. So I'm going to clone my application, um, which I'm going to modify. So I have created a application that is ASP.NET 4.5 with MySQL database earlier. So let's clone this application and we'll modify the some title here. Again, you need to provide the git clone destination. Okay, and click finish. So it's again cloning the same. Yeah. So here we can see my, uh, my application is successfully cloned and it's launched the source code to my solution explorer. Now, yeah. Now I'm going to modify the uh, title uh, of this application. So the ASP.NET with MySQL. So I will show you the same with the web browser, how it looks like. For modification. Okay, here you can see. Um, so earlier I have created a ASP.NET application with MySQL support on, on OpenShift server, and here you can see some records I have added earlier. So let's modify this title um, from the Visual Studio and push it to the OpenShift server. So here's the title. Yeah, okay. So I'm going to put the modified application. And just commit your changes to the GitHub repository directly from your widget to your gallery and put some. Yeah, and click on commit and push. So once the changes is committed to the GitHub repository, we'll start the build directly from my bunch of explorer. Yeah. So here we can see the start build. So the start build will deploy the changes uh, from my GitHub repository to my uh, OpenShift server application. Okay, so this will take some time. 
to complete the build. So till then we will see the build logs directly from here. Yeah, you can see the second build is running right now, and you can also check the build logs. So basically, it it's helps. Uh, it's very helpful for the developers uh, to trace the build logs and troubleshoot the problems. It's committing the container and providing some yeah creating the user there and, yeah. and clone the application yeah here we can see it's pushing the changes to my yeah successfully pushed now let's check the changes as deployed yeah from browse and here click on the browser okay um it will take a minute as it's creating the another pod like um, just refresh it and you can see it from here okay the pod build is complete and it's running refresh and again And here we can see we have modified the title of the application directly from the Visual Studio ID. Now um, let's check our previous application which we have created earlier. And yeah, it's also completed. So let's see how it looks like. And here we can see the application which I have created on the start of this demonstration. That is. Um, ASP.NET Core with MongoDB is successfully built and let's add some data again here. Nodes and yeah, and submit. And we can say it's working fine. So now let's talk about the OpenShift Explorer features. Uh, so far, we have seen the OpenShift Explorer features like start build, um, open the application from web browser, uh, from web browser, and uh, the build logs. So OpenShift Explorer supports uh, uh, a lot more features uh, here, like um, the port forwarding, the open terminal, the webhook trigger. So we'll uh, see these features one by one. Okay, so. So suppose uh, this is my application and from here I can get the webhook URL from Visual Studio ID. So it helps uh, the developers to um, deploy the, sorry, it helps the developers to automatically trigger your build um, while making any changes to your GitHub repositories to your OpenShift application. And uh, uh, in, in my scenario, actually I have not uh, configured this webhook URL uh, to my GitHub repository. So I have started the build manually. And apart from this, uh, we can also see the next uh, feature that is, we can also see the pod logs of the running container, like the pod logs here. And we can see, yeah, the listening on the address and so on. And uh, next is, uh, we can see the open terminal options. So like I have a node.js application and I need to see um, I, I need to log in to the container and I need to run the Linux command inside the container and see what the source code is going on. So I can directly go to the Linux container from the running pod, right click on the running pod and click on open terminal. So here you can see I have logged into inside my container and I can see the source code path and the source code uh, which is used uh, inside the node.js application now let's come back exit and exit next is um, we can also um, edit the json files um, from directly from your Visual Studio id so suppose uh, i need to scale up my pod so currently i have a single pod running here as you can see and i need to scale up pod by uh, editing the json file uh, the replication controller json file so i will directly go to the Replication controller and click on edit. And here I can see the replicas. I will go and change the replicas to two and save. 
it and refresh it and here we can see the node.js pod there are two pods are running the one and the two and the next is the port forwarding so basically uh, port forwarding helps user to uh, access the the application uh, directly from the local host so suppose um, i have created application using the front end and the back end and uh, my, i don't want to expose uh, my database i don't want to create a route for my database and uh, so my database will not accessible directly uh, uh, from my network to the cluster ip so what i will do i will uh, start the port forwarding and i will access the database from the local host so we'll see here um, suppose i have a mysql database running here and this is my running pod so i will just start the port forwarding of mysql database and here you can see the port forwarding options and the local port and my remote port i also uh, I, I can also select the random ports which will be generated by the visual studio tool and here you can see the another port so i will go with the, the default port and start port forwarding yeah and here you can see the port forwarding has started successfully now let's access this database from the local host so i have a mysql workbench here which i have used to connect the mysql database and i can show you the connection yeah here you can see the local host host name the database port uh, the username which i have used for this database and the database name so just close it and connect database now okay i have logged into my database and let's check the tables so, yeah here we can see the table and the values i will say we check the same values from the browser right now so here and uh, go to routes and right click and show in web browser so here you can see the same data available um, so now i'm um, i'm going to add some records from my uh, database and we can see the reflection here so i have a query okay let's insert something Yeah, and execute the query and I can see successfully inserted the data again check the data from database and click on execute yeah I can see my record is successfully added and check the same from the browser yeah here we can see the reflection so we see the port forwarding feature here and I have access uh, the my database from using the port forwarding uh, and localhost let's close it and stop the port forwarding now okay yeah the port forwarding and stop this port forwarding now okay so uh, there are many more uh, there are many more features available on OpenShift explorer so um, for, for full feature specifications, you can watch our YouTube uh, videos uh, at Little Cloud. And uh, yeah, now we'll come again to the PPT. Okay. Yeah, so let's have a quick recall uh, what we have uh, seen till now. So we have seen the create.NET application and modifying the existing application using the OpenShift tool. Also, we talked about the OpenShift Explorer and its features like start build. A web of URL view build and pod logs and launching the terminal directly from the visual studio ID and we have added to the JSON file and uh, created the replica of the pod and also we have seen the port forwarding feature and here you can see the latest developments uh, of, of OpenShift tool that is uh, OpenShift server adapter which helps user to directly publish the changes to the running container and it omits the uh, build process from the OpenShift next is cdk adapter uh, which is also uh, the latest development which helps user to run the cdk uh, uh, virtual machine on on their development machine 
and the next is the docker explorer so uh, you can also use the docker explorer to manage the docker images or to to run the container directly or to the docker server cover these features in in some next session these are the future plans uh, in august releases that is uh, support for asking in asp.net images uh, the remote debugging asp.net application running in openshift container and compatible with older version of visual studio so current version is compatible with visual studio 2015 any edition uh, but uh, we are also working with uh, make it compatible with visual studio 2012 and visual studio 2013 and the upcoming ones and the next is the announcement in open source explorer for is to access that's the future plans and okay that's all from my end please feel free uh, to ask any questions if you have well thank you very much Kapil. that um what, one of the wonderful things about that there was there was no smoke and mirrors it was all live demo and it all worked which was um very amazing um my first question i think and uh, anyone else who's got questions on can pop them into the chat is this is currently available for people to use now from the visual studio store correct yeah correct so you, they can directly download this extension from the Visual Studio Gallery, yeah, right from here. So just search for click to cloud or OpenShift keywords on Visual Studio Marketplace, uh, sorry, Visual Studio Gallery, and you can get the extension. Mm -hmm. Also, uh, they, yeah, it's also available uh, directly from the Visual Studio, from Tools, Exchange Updates, and we can go to online and directly search for the click to cloud. So the developer can directly download it from here as well yeah it's searching right now it's, it's pretty it's so pretty awesome to, to see this actually working in, in production because um i haven't used visual studio in a long time and um i guess this means i'm going to have to go back um and reinstall it and start using it again uh, so it'll be lots of fun and also we have the so, any more questions? I'm not seeing any questions. I think you did a very good job um, explaining everything. Um, we'll have to get you back on in August sometime to give us the update when the new features come in. Um, and we'll post this recording um, on the, the blog.openshift.com blog site uh, as soon as it's ready and, and people can download it and, and email you if they have any, any further questions. But it looks like a pretty robust solution for getting your .NET applications up and running on, on OpenShift 3. And uh, we are very excited to get feedback on it from everybody out there in the community. And um, we're looking forward to seeing you guys at Red Hat Summit and getting some of these demos done again in, in person. Um, so if anyone has any questions, um, please send some emails to uh, the Click to Cloud guys or post them on the OpenShift Commons mailing list and we'll try and get them answered as quickly as possible. And I know that Manesh is on and there are other folks on here. There's been a lot of work that's gone on in the background here. I'm not sure if Manesh, if you wanted to add anything in there. Thank you, Diane. And uh, we'll surely be there in the uh, Red Hat Summit and we'll be def definitely uh, uh, holding a session with you uh, in uh, Birds of Feather Meetup. And there we can also, other people also can have a look and feel of our product. And they can check how this these two different technologies can work together harmoniously. And we can create a heterogeneous cloud environment. And we do not have to choose between Red Hat or uh, Microsoft. It can work together. That's a yeah. promise. It, it's, gonna be, uh, it's gonna be a brave new world out there because there are millions and millions of .NET developers um, and getting them um, to move over to containers and using it this way is gonna be um, quite interesting to see them all mixing it up at, um, with all the Linux folks. So I'm, I'm quite pleased with this new, new offering. Uh, so thank you very much again, everybody, for putting this um, presentation together. And we'll talk to you all um, very shortly again next week. And we'll be seeing everybody hopefully at the Red Hat Summit.